I got involved in farming because I was born into it. Um, my grandfather started the farm, my daddy took it over, and I was just kind of raised up doing it, and I enjoyed it. I always have, and I just decided which way I was going to turn for my livelihood. I started drawing an income off the farm in 1997 when I was a senior in high school. I started, um, we, me and my brother kind of grew up into it, and then we started taking it over, and we always been a, a tobacco farm. We still do a little bit of tobacco, but we kind of going away from that, doing other things. We still raise produce. Um, we still raise grains, small grains, soybeans, corn. Um, and we do strawberries and pumpkins. And we also, um, we do pasture raised pork also. So I would say in two, 2015 is kind of when the farm started making its largest transitions from, um, you know, mainly tobacco to um, produce. So we started with strawberries eight years ago um, and started bringing um, community members out to the farm um, for you pick strawberries. And um, from that we've evolved to um, weekly produce boxes. Um, we sell at a couple of local farmers markets and also sell directly from the farm itself. What motivated me to keep farming is I mean, I love being outside, watch, watching the plants itself grow. I mean, I always have. There's nothing like in the springtime turning over the land and that smell, just something about it. Um, it's got to be in your blood. Yeah, I, I teach ag, and that's, you know, what I really enjoy. And I, my passion is letting people know how important agriculture really is and that we all have to have it every day. Um, and, you know, when I started teaching and students told me that, you know, their groceries come from the grocery store. I knew that, you know, our mission really needs to be to let people know where their food really is coming from. It, it doesn't feel like it's been too long ago. I was asked that question when I was younger. You know, how would I, you know, how would a young person get started farming? And it would be easy if you had somebody who was already farming that you could go in there and work with for a few years and maybe buy them out or they turn it over to you, however, you know, it works. But, um, it, it would be really, really hard to start up on your own. I'm not saying it can't be done, but you, you could do it small scale and then grow bigger, but it would be very, very hard right now, the way things are. Well, I think the best thing would, you know, for somebody who's interested um, is to, to start small um, and, you know, work as a, a mentee under a good mentor and, you know, see what has worked for them and, and not be afraid to try something new uh, because I think that that's a lot of times what we see in the ag industry of a lot of people say, well, this is how we've done it for so long. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're know, stepping out and doing something different, uh, you know, may be the answer to, you know, preserving your family farm and really telling your story. Um, you know, a lot of that can go a long way if people know, you know, about your family farm and what your mission and, you know, what you're looking to do, then they are a whole lot more opt to, you know, support you and your product. I do this because, I mean, it's, it's the best life it is. If you can make it work, it's one of the best life it is for you, for your children. I mean. Yeah, having three little girls of our own, I mean, being able to raise them on the family farm is, you know, really the push behind it all. I, I'm going to say right now, labor. That's the biggest challenge right now, finding people to work. And, you know, of course, we have to go outside the country. H2A label and do that. But, but I think it's hard to find somebody who you know, has that same passion and drive that you do and that will treat what you have and what you're trying to do the same as, as what you do. That's more difficult.